are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. Your experience is seriously amazing. <laughs> um, and I was a little bit excited to talk about the Emmy nominations and wins that you have had because you have a ton. Your series, After Forever, has won six Emmys. That is amazing. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. And I know that there is a special for it airing in December. Can you um, tell the listeners where they can watch this and tell us a little bit about what it's like to work on a project that has such a massive impact? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the The show is on Amazon. So if you are in the US and, or the UK, you can find it on Amazon. If you have Amazon Prime, you can watch it. Um, also on binge networks um, around the world. So uh, if you, you know, if you Google, uh, after forever, if you're not in the States, uh, you'll, you should be able to find it. Um, but yeah, the show it's, it's so great that a show about, um, you know, uh, relationships after 50 <laughs> and especially in the gay community, um, you know, the show is about two men who, um, you know, have everything until they don't. Um, and one of them, you know, unfortunately uh, doesn't survive and, and it's about moving on and, and, you know, loss and grief. And um, it's just a really universal story. So it's so, it's just so amazing to be a part of something that has so much heart and has touched so many people. Um, and to be recognized that is just, you know, unbelievable. It's like, you never go into something thinking like, this is going to win me Emmys. <laughs> but, you know, it, and it's totally, was, you know, humbling to, to be a part of that, that community and be recognized for something so amazing. It has such an amazing theme. As you said, you know, love in the older age and being part of the LGBTQ as well as like loss. I think right now people can really relate to that. Um, this idea of having mm -hmm. a lot and then losing it with everything going on right now. So it's amazing that the work was there for the passion, but then also got recognized for what it was trying to do. That message was received by the audience the way that you had hope. And it's kind of a serious topic, but you have other more fun things, you know, more lighthearted. <laughs> um, and I want to talk about those. So Dinosaur Hunter, which is a scripted comedy podcast, is a really interesting concept. As somebody who loves podcasting, obviously, um, <laughs> tell us a little bit about how that came to be. So, you know, I, I've, I'm a huge podcast fan. And, and I think like a lot of people, we got our feet wet with a uh, cereal. So I was listening to a lot of, you know, true crime podcasts. Um, and, and what that did, my husband and I, he's, he's a music composer. Um, so we both work in the industry and uh, we had um, developed two other podcasts before this one that were uh, nonfiction podcasts. So we had kind of, we had produced a couple of things before this. And one of them was a spinoff of a true crime uh, wrongful conviction podcast. Um, so Undisclosed featured this guy, um, Gary Mitchum Reeves, and his wrongful conviction story. And uh, my husband produced a podcast with me. We both produced a podcast um, where he was doing sound design um, on top of music to enhance the stories that he was telling. And we were just having so much fun creating that, you know, audio atmosphere for these stories. And people were so excited about it that when a concept that, um, that my husband had had a while ago kind of, you know, popped back up in my mind and I thought, you know, your concept about, you know, this uh, paleontologist that doesn't believe in dinosaurs, um, you know, while that's a really big budget, you know, TV show to make, you know, this actually is something that's really doable for us on, you know, these are, this is something we can both do together and, and we don't need a ton of resources to get the story out there. So because of his background with audio, he, he knew he could do all of that himself and we have some great actors we have access to. So it really came together pretty quickly. And the scripts are just, I mean, they're funny. The actors are great. They're, it's just a really fun ride. And like, who doesn't want to tell stories? There's just so many fun stories out there. And I feel like we need those fun stories right now. I had no idea that you worked with true crime, which is my favorite genre. Um, <laughs> it's basically all I consume. It's great that you kind of ventured out of that seriousness and came up with something fun. Um, I think that that adds a lot to the creativity that you hold. You know, you're able to do storytelling in a really unique way 
both creatively and, you know, with, with film, with television and with a true crime podcast in a serious way as well and get that message across to, mm-hmm. to viewers and listeners. And I know that you have an upcoming project, Jeffrey. What can you tell us about that? Uh, Jeffrey is a um, magical romance. It's a concept that was created by um, our, our writer director is Connie Sue. And the, the really amazing thing about this project is it was conceived before COVID, but it actually is a, a very um, much sought after process that we're that we're doing right now because of COVID. So we're we're doing dealing a lot with virtual production because our entire um, set is virtual. And so we're using LED walls. Um, you know, we're building all of the environments in, you know, visual effects in, in Unreal and using the real-time engine that they have. And so a lot of that work has been able to span this whole time. And we're actually going to be filming next week. And it's possible in part because of the way we're filming and the way this was created. And the exciting part is that because we're, we're actually doing a lot of things that have never been done before and testing um, the technology to use in a cinematic way, a lot of people are waiting to see what this looks like, how it turns out, because it is a real case study in virtual production. So I'm really excited about that. Right now is such a unique time um, to be producing new things, especially given a pandemic and with the industry kind of being a little bit locked down still. I wonder what sparked this idea of doing a project right now in this time? Yeah, well, I mean, this was something Connie had been working on for a while. And just because of the way that we're approaching it, it was something that we could continue working on and make happen, um, regardless of what was going on. I mean, obviously, there's still you know, lots of protocols and testing and safety things we have to keep in mind. But, you know, everybody, you know, the way that we're doing this and, and what virtual production allows you to do is, is instead of having to make company moves and move all over the place or be in different environments, we're bringing the environments to us on a stage. Um, so it, it was one of those things that we were already in pre-production on it when the pandemic hit. And we thought, okay, well, this gives us a little more time to really refine the virtual um, like those digital environments. And then, you know, w- we should be able to film this um, with the right protocols in place. Um, it should still be possible. And that's why I'm so glad that this project is happening right now, because I think, like you said, so many of us are not able to go and do the projects that we we're supposed to be doing this year, right? I mean, it's like I look back at what this year was supposed to be. Um, and it's just so different and, (laughs) but we've all, you know, we're all creative people and we, you know, as a producer, it's always about how do we overcome challenges. And so this production and the production, the special for after forever, you know, the way that we're approaching it is all with the mind towards safety, but still being able to be creative and tell our stories and get content out there. If any industry is capable of adjusting to this new normal that we're living in, I really think it's television and film um, Mm -hmm. because there are so many things that are accessible to crews to use. And I think that they were being underused because why, what was the need, you know, and now with projects like this, what's so awesome about it is you do it. Like you said, it's a, it's a case study. You test it out. And when it's successful, you know that if anything like this ever happens again, we don't have to start from scratch. We know mm-hmm. we have access to um, different types of tools that we can use to create something that still adds value and is mm-hmm. content for those who are in quarantine, sitting and watching Netflix all day to consume, <laughs> right? Still mm-hmm. making an impact. Um, do you have any type of timeline as to when this will come out and where viewers can get it? You know, I would say towards the later end of next year, we should have something available. And we're, we're going to start talking a lot more about it um, and, and getting some press so that people can help, you know, can follow along with what we're doing. And we've been doing that along the way because we want to share the information too. And we want people to understand like there are other ways to go into production, do it safely and, you know, do it with this, the technology that's out there. And, um, you know, we're, we just want to be able to share the information so people can do this um, in the future. You have such a positive attitude towards putting out a product right now, a new project during this crazy time. 
What advice do you have for other creatives who are thinking about doing something right now and maybe feel a little hesitant? Yeah, well, I totally understand the the being hesitant about it. It's it is a scary time, and I definitely, you know, it, if you are able to, you know, uh, figure out a safer way to do things and to approach things, I definitely suggest doing that. Um, but this is a good time to really be developing writing um, and planning. I mean, you can't do too much pre production, so um, it gives you a lot of time to really prepare for when we can go back, but there are many people making things and being creative about how to, how to tell stories right now. Um, I'm a part of the organization women in media, and we just did, um, a screenplay competition and as part of one of our initiatives. And one of our focuses was stories that can be told in a more controlled environment with less people. And, you know, and the scripts that came out of that are just wonderful and they're not about COVID. Um, and they're not, you know, about someone stuck in a room, but you know, it was kind of like thinking, okay, if I have these constraints, you know, what kind of stories can I tell? And, you know, we can tell these intimate, more controlled stories right now. And I think that that's what we're going to see a lot more of over the next year. I think a lot of the creatives, the producers, the actresses who have come on the show have said the same thing. Like the, the world of entertainment is going to look different within mm -hmm. the next year because people think that we're shut down, but there's a lot of creativity happening right now. Mm -hmm. A lot of things being produced from home, um, yeah. remotely. I know even some of the shows that we watch and love are now producing via, you know, home edits. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's just going to be very interesting. Um, but I like to kind of end with a fun question for my guests and obviously your Emmys are a huge part of your portfolio. Um, they have an amazing mission and they were well-deserved, but I'm sure that viewers and listeners really want to know what you can tell us about attending the Emmys <laughs> and what it was like there. Um, I mean, it, it was, it was amazing. It was, you know, the, the, so I've been nominated a couple of years. Um, and the year that we won for best series, um, it was just, I mean, it was kind of like a dream come true and kind of surreal. It's like when, when your name gets called and you know, your, your entire show is rushing up onto that stage, you like, you can't even believe that that's your life, <laughs> you know? So it's, it, it was in those moments that you just, you don't even really know what's happening. It doesn't hit you, you know, for days really until, you know, later on you look back and go, oh my God, that was me. Um, so, you know, being able to sit there in the audience with so many people that you look up to um, and, you know, that inspire you is just really amazing, you know, to, to be in the room um, and be recognized for the hard work. Um, so yeah, it's, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's the glamorous part of the industry that's not glamorous at all. <laughs> and what most people, you know, outside of the industry only see those moments. So it's nice to, to be able to, you know, get your hair done, get, get dressed up, walk the red carpet, do some interviews and actually, you know, live the, the momentary glamour, uh, that everybody thinks that, uh, is what Hollywood's all about. As a viewer, we watch these shows and these films and we think that they deserve an Emmy for mm -hmm. what we are seeing, but there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes and a lot of hard work that was put into what we are seeing as that final product. So I'm sure that having those, your blood, sweat, and tears recognized for these programs really meant a lot to you and to your team. I'm very jealous. Hopefully one day I will get to be at the <laughs> Emmys just to experience yes. it. I always ask my guests to bring something positive going on in the world to cheers to at the end of the show. So what positive news do you have to share? Um, I mean, I think I'm really excited and grateful this week that we wrapped uh, production on our remote special for After Forever, and it was something that I also directed. So I'm really excited about that because after two years of producing the show and we're not able to go into season three yet, we were able to make this special and I, I got to uh, be even a little you know more creative with it this year as the director so and being able to accomplish a remote shoot where I had you know I was directing from Los Angeles most of my cast was in New York and one was in Vancouver so it was quite a feat but we we did it and the footage looks amazing and I'm really excited about it and as you said it's going to be coming out in December so 
you know, huge, you know, kudos to all my, my actors because they really have it hard on these remote shoots. They're doing everything. And I think they're, they're, they're definitely counting down the days when we can all go back to set where they don't have to do their own makeup and wardrobe and hair and camera and sound and all that stuff. Right. So, uh, actors are really, you know, picking it up and, uh, doing, more than their part right now. Congratulations again on that special. It's so amazing that you're able to do that, especially during this time. Um, I'm sure that the fans of of the show are really, you know, excited to see some extra content right. before season three comes out. And congratulations on everything else we've talked about, Emmys thank and all. You. It's been a pleasure to talk to you. Seriously, thank you so much for coming on. Absolutely. Thank you for having me.